Right now, President Obama's prescription for the keep your coverage debacle, he says, a small adjust, adjustment, excuse me, should solve the problem. Critics, and they are growing in numbers, they say no. Can the White House beat the clock before Obamacare becomes nothing more than a bigger punchline than it is already? And then, what do you see when you look at this photo? A group exercising their Second Amendment rights or a group trying to intimidate the gun control uh, audience as well? We're going to get into that issue when we talk about Newtown uh, and the 11th month since that. And later, athletes say it, rappers say it, comics say it too. Which word? Well, it is the N-word here, and for many, uh, it's time has come here to maybe have a readjustment. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to RFL. I'm Richard French. Thanks for joining us this Thursday evening, November 14th. First, they came the rollout problems when it came to Obamacare. Then came the apology, and today, the fix. But is it all too late here for the president's signature program? Has the public already made up their mind about Obamacare, or can the president salvage the program and his political legacy. First, we're going to get the latest developments, and we'll bring in Andrew Whitman for that. And Andrew, I've never seen the president more contrite than he was today. He, he apologized repeatedly, and we've got a clip of him doing so for about 25 seconds, Rich. The president admitted his administration fumbled the Obamacare rollout. He took personal responsibility for the error, and today, under growing opposition, including a ton from other Democrats, he offered a fix for those being dropped by their insurance companies. But that fix is just a temporary one, and some wonder if it'll work at all. Millions of frustrated Americans have received cancellation notices from their insurance companies because their plans didn't meet the standards set by Obamacare. To those Americans, I hear you loud and clear. I said that I would do everything we can to fix this problem. Today, President Obama offered a temporary fix. Insurers can extend current plans that would otherwise be canceled into 2014. So the administration is now putting the onus on the insurance companies to make consumers happy. And the president said his health care law now isn't the reason for the canceled plans. The insurance companies may still come back and say, we want to charge you 20% more than we did last year, uh, or we're go not going to cover prescription drugs now. Insurers say this could be a gigantic, complicated mess. Canceled plans now have to be repriced and filed with state regulators for approval. The whole process usually takes months. The insurance industry's top lobbyist warned, quote, changing the rules after health care plans have already met the requirements of the law could destabilize the market and result in higher premiums for consumers. Republicans have been targeting Obamacare since the day it was signed into law. There is no way to fix this. But now President Obama was facing a revolt from his own party. Our failure to roll out the ACA smoothly has put a burden on Democrats. The White House hoping the president deflated growing support for a pair of bills in Congress aimed at fixing the insurance drops. The House version that could seriously cripple the program in its entirety is set for a vote tomorrow, and dozens of Democrats were reportedly leaning towards a yes vote. All of this after former President Bill Clinton led the fix-it fire earlier this week. For young people mostly, but not all young, who are in the individual market whose incomes are above 400 percent of the poverty level. They were the ones who heard the promise, if you like what you got, you can keep it. I personally believe, even if it takes a change in the law, the president should honor the commitment the federal government made to those people and let them keep what they got. The bad week for Obamacare continued yesterday with word of only 106,000 enrollments in the program, about 20 percent of the White House's target. Falling short could financially cripple the plan. And then there's the numbers of public opinion in freefall. Gallup showing just 40% approve of Obamacare right now, 55% disapprove. That is the program's highest negatives in a year. The plus minus for Obamacare sliding 12 points in just the last two weeks as Obamacare's problems became the story in the nation. Rich? All right, Andrew, thank you. And, and we can get some procedural stuff. Yes, the House can have their vote, and maybe a few Democrats can. Uh, it probably won't get through the Senate, and it certainly is not going to get past the president's desk. So whatever the machinations in Washington, uh, not that it's a yawn, but it's not the point. Dominic, we talked about this yesterday. Perception often is more important than reality right now, mm -hmm. and the clock is almost more important than the promises. President has to show that the thing's going to work. We heard testimony yesterday 
four guys weren't bad from the administration, but the only headline people heard was when they said, well, you promise us you'll deliver by November 30th a functioning website where everybody can get to it. They couldn't say yes definitively. Time's running out here, and it's not as simple as saying, okay, yeah, we'll let the people come on, we'll add another year to the program. The stuff is hard to fix, it's complicated, it's hard to digest. I don't know, he gets a second bite at the apple here. The program's not going to go away, the president's not going to let that happen, but he's got real problems, and he's got midterms less than uh, 12 months away. This is definitely, it appears, Richard, going to bleed over into the midterm elections. And if that happens, for sure, Democrats are not going to be happy. We're witnessing that right now. You know, I always try, Richard, to put things into personal perspective. So this afternoon, I'm with my cardiologist, and we're discussing this, right? And this guy is a really good doctor. And he kind of put it in perspective for me. He said, you know, they do have to fix the website. He said, but something has to be done. I'm quoting him. He said, I'm just glad now that people with pre-existing conditions can get insurance. Yep. And this is from a medical doctor from Columbia Presbyterian. So there are problems. I hope the president can fix it because we are talking about his legacy. Yes. We are talking about his legacy going down the drain. He fought for this if for he doesn't five fix years. It. This was his one. I mean, he didn't have a lot of political capital because he inherited, obviously, um, uh, the crash of 08 when he walked into uh, the office. That all said... He said, this is what I want, and he, and he bet down on it. And how rude of me to, not to introduce the panel before I started. Uh, Mayo Bartlett here, lawyer extraordinaire. Um, he's former uh, chief here of the Bias Crimes Unit at Westchester County DA's office. Um, and he's got a lot of interesting cases. We'll talk about that. And a lot of also social issues I want to uh, bring you in on. And Andrew, who you've met before. And Andrew, coming back to the challenge the president really has uh, in front of him, in the end, Congress isn't going to, uh, he's not going to sign anything that's going to repeal the legislation. Um, we both know there's agendas here, not that they're going to try and tweak this thing. They're not going to defund it either because that doesn't fly too well here. But the administration's got no one to blame for themselves, and they can say all they want today, look at me, the buck stops with me. Democrats can be asked about this between now and the election, and if they still stand by the president, if this thing is so flawed in every way here, um, the closer we get to the election here, they're going to have a hard time standing with them. Uh, practicality is going to over uh, Trump policy. And we've had an interesting shift from the GOP when it comes to Obamacare. You're not hearing so much about the defund it, the repeal and replace. Now you're just hearing oversight and, mm -hmm. and the Daryl Issa committee tomorrow, and asking questions. And you can explain this a little bit. Tomorrow, for those of you who don't know a name here, Congressman Upton, okay, a Republican out of, I believe, Michigan. He's going to be coming up with a plan here tomorrow. If you look at the plan, it eviscerates what the program, program is. The, the, the dirty little secret is the reason why um, this legislation came to be was you had 50 million Americans, and most projections said it was going to go up to 60 million not too long, that couldn't get health coverage. Why? Because the HMOs basically said, we're going to take the healthy ones. You're sick? No, not so much here. You got a pre-existing condition? Good luck. And where did they go? They went to the ERs. I know most of you know this, but it seems like a little uh, a proviso here of just recent history might help. Why did we do this? For anyone who pretended like the system was so great, we got to go back to it. It was great if you were healthy or you were rolling in cash. If you weren't healthy, the best of luck to you. And I think Dominic's example, where he talked about the cardiologist, hit it home. And for me, Mayo, that's where I think... The, the most amount of anger is coming from, not just politically uh, where somebody could be in trouble, but the wasted opportunity after he got through the fight, the public was going to give him the benefit of the doubt. This administration, with the technical know-how to run the most uh, savvy 21st century campaign in the history of this country, if not the world, couldn't make a website work when they knew for five years this was the game plan. It just boggles the mind what's gotten us to the place we are today. Well, absolutely, and you have to think that, that right now you probably have millions of people buying songs on iTunes. I mean, we have a surveillance. Uh, the NSA is able to determine what we're, what we're uh, talking about and look at our emails. But the thing that I think is getting lost is that we're worrying about Obama's uh, legacy. We're talking about all of these other things. What, what's lost here, and going back exactly to what you said, is if you get sick, and you require long-term hospitalization, or you can't communicate, you end up in a nursing home yep. for five or six years. You may have two or three million dollars in the bank, and maybe health care wasn't an issue for you before, 
But you have four or five kids. By the time you spend a couple of years in that nursing home, all of the money you've worked hard for and saved and your home, it's not going to go to your children. It's going to go to uh, your health care providers right now. So that's why we really we can't afford for this not no. to succeed. And if you just care about basic math, forget about equity, forget about fairness, forget about like what's the least we owe a society that we, we're the only you know, westernized nation who doesn't have health care for its people. Forget all that. You talk to any hospital. They shutter their doors if the ER becomes the de facto gathering place. You can't do this. No. You can't afford it. People live longer. They need the care. we got to do something. And, Andrew, you and I both know the dirty little secret for the opposition to this, forget about the screwed up website, is they knew, just like they knew with Social Security with, with FDR and Medicare with LBJ, once this thing starts to work and people say it was better than it was before, they're not going to want to give this thing up here. So l they're grabbing on with fingernails to kill this thing before it gets gone. Which is why this might be the most precarious time for Obamacare right now. Uh, because if this thing mm -hmm. dies, if it gets pulled down, uh, do you think the, the solution to this is going to be let's give health care to everybody or yeah. it's going to be go back to the system that we had before? And that's why the Republicans are so disingenuous on this issue, as you've been pointing out. Because attack, 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 but what's your solution? Yeah. And to the point you just made, I know we got to go to a break, but this is real, and I thought about this for a second, about emergen uh, emergency rooms, the cost of emergency rooms, hospitals closing down. Beth is real north. Look at the neighborhood in New York City that it's in. York Avenue, 89th Street, across from Gracie Mansion, closed. Uh, NYU, the medical center down on 34th Street, shut down the emergency room. So no more emergency room. It was a big room. issue for de Blasio, one of the reasons, yeah. one of his populist issues during the campaign. We also don't talk about the fact that when you have people who are using the emergency room as their primary care, if you come in with a real emergency, you have a stroke and the person before maybe drank too much, no one's going to know that. So mm. you could pass away because mm. that person's there unnecessarily. Mm. So that's another thing that we don't think about. We Listen, don't talk about those uh, deaths. As much as I think it's fair to say there's different agendas for why people wanted to fund to kill the thing, at the end of the day, this is on the president. He made that loud and clear today. He said, the buck stops with me. He made it clear he wouldn't have talked about this thing if he didn't think it was going to work here. So he said, this is a huge screw up. It's something he talked about how imperfect not only he is as a man here, but as a president. The clock is ticking, Mr. President. You got to get this thing straightened out here. All right. Now we want to hear from you uh, at home as always. And here's our question for you. Your view of Obamacare, is it a positive prescription or a political punchline? Can he turn it around? All the analogies about Boston sound terrific in Massachusetts when they tried it there, but this is national here, and as we said here, you don't have a lot of time to fix. Let's go to Facebook and Twitter and sound off. All right, when we come back here, we're gonna talk about guns, a frequent subject on this program. 11 months after Newtown, Let's be honest, what really has changed? A few states adopting legislation, but nationally, not a lot except more staggering here tragedies and more sobering numbers. We're going to have more on that after this.